Welcome back, Zero K fans, to the December 2019 1v1 tournament. We have the losers pre-finals between Dyth and Matthew Whiteman on Titan Duel, which is starting right now, actually. Just getting themselves set up, and we are go. So Matthew Whiteman is going for the rovers. And Dyth going for tanks, because Dyth loves them tanks. Of course they do. Although, on a map like this, I can kind of see it. I mean, this is a good map for, as I mentioned before, any kind of vehicles. Rovers, tanks, hovercraft. If you're Golda. I mean, hey, when, back in the day when Golda was playing more often, they'd play hovercraft on this map all the time, and it was terrifying. And actually, to be fair, hovercraft halberds are still really strong. I feel like people sleep on that a lot. Although, to be fair, getting to the halberds is a little bit tricky, and raiding with hovercraft is a tough thing to do. But still... I feel like people kind of sleep on that a bit. Like, rovers are by far the most popular factory in the game. Like, just bar none. If you look at the stats, they are the factory everyone plays. At every skill level. And like I said, the higher skill levels, they're it's pretty even matchups all around. But at every skill level, rovers are popular. So Matthew Whiteman is kind of a little bit of trouble dealing with Dice harassment. I mean, Dice has had a lot of practice this entire tournament getting this harassment going. They've had it work sometimes and not work other times. But Matthew Whiteman, they're coming with the Scorchers, and it looks like they kind of have a similar strategy to what Ultra Godzilla had that did work out really well. They had the darts already in place. Unfortunately, Matthew Whiteman's micro is not quite as good, so they're not able to stop that Kodachi when they need to. And unfortunately, drop oh, they drove the darts right into the Kodachi fire. Those darts are not going to survive. Okay, I should say one more shot and they won't survive. Although I like the flanking going on here. Oh, last second coming in. The other just burns to death afterwards. The darts, unfortunately, not able to do anything. So a bit of a shame the darts were not sent out when they were needed right at the beginning when the Kodachi first came in here. That is a shame. So that is a problem. And yeah, fine. So Panther was, or Blitz rather, it was buffed a bit. The cost was reduced by 15 metal. It's a small buff, but it's something. Yeah, people still plop tanks. I mean, like I said, at the high levels of this game, the they're I think the matchup is I think for tanks it was like basically 50-50. Like most of the matchups at the high level are 50-50. And even the mid high level, it's I think 6-4 at the worst. Or 65-35 at the worst. And tanks were not on the low end of that. It was I think. Amph bots were on the low end of one of those matchup things, and hovercraft as well. A lot of people didn't really use them properly. But tanks were fine. They were a little bit disadvantaged, but not by much. So a small buff like that seems reasonable. However, the Kodachis coming in here are not doing so well, just because the fence are coming in. There was a nice counter coming in there from Matthew Whiteman. They know exactly what to build. Switching out from there, though, I mean, Scorcher, Fencer, Ripper, I like the idea. I don't like the lack of Masons, though. I really dislike the fact that Matthew Whiteman is not going for the expansion at the same time. Uh, that is an absolutely necessary part of this game. If you do not expand, you will die. And unfortunately, Matthew Whiteman is not expanding. That is sealing their fate in the mid-game. I like the fact that the rating is working pretty well, but it's not working well enough to really be an excuse. Like, ultimately, it is going to be a problem. It is going to be something that Matthew Whiteman is going to be dealing with within the next two or three minutes. And Dyth is just expanding everywhere. They have welders all around. They're not quite as consistent as they could be. I mean, they're a little bit... The south side could be built up a bit faster. But that's... I mean, that leaves things a bit even. Might be convincing Matthew Whiteman they have a bit of a chance to get away with this. But no, they're just now building another mason. Which is... Or sorry, they had, they had yet another. But still, they're not expanding that much. And that's just, just asking for trouble. It's very quickly asking for trouble. Matthew Whiteman is already forced to retreat from that eastern harassment, which is opening the entire eastern side up to Dyth. And the south side, of course, is being well, not quite opened up. I mean, it, it's something Dyth could take whenever they want to, but they haven't gone and taken it yet. Matt is I mean, managing to defend reasonably okay against the Kodachi, but Dyth, they're, that's what they're doing with the harassment. They're just maintaining this position where Matt can't really do anything. On top of that, Matty Whiteman needs to build a few more power plants. It's just, well, I mean, granted, this has been a kind of a consistent theme in this entire tournament, is that more energy! 
Build more energy. It's not hard. Just get more power plants. It'll work really nicely for you. I mean, Dyeth has some wind generators in the back, but this is not a map where I would recommend going for wind generators. Not really sure what the idea is there. Same time, Matthew Whiteman's commander. Going for the slide. Going for the death slide. It does manage to get rid of an ogre. But that was close. At the same time, though, Scorch coming in the south. This is much more effective. Should be able to get rid of the welders. And yes, it does. Gets rid of the welders. Gets rid of the metal extractors. Power plants as well. This entire southwest side is gone. And with that welder gone, there's no easy way for Dyke to take the south expansion, which is perfect as Matthew Whiteman is going for that immediately. So very nicely timed there. That's exactly what I wanted to see. When I say attack and harass, or harass and then expand behind it, that is pretty much textbook, what we just saw there. And continuing along, because Dyth had set this up naked. These Scorchers are taking full advantage of that. There's one Lotus over in the main base. Two Scorchers that are damaged slightly won't be able to take it out too easily. Although, to be fair... Oh, that Emissary! Oh, I was about to say, to be fair, the line of sight blocking from the Wind Generator is keeping those Scorchers alive. But nope, the Emissary said no! That being said, Matthew Whiteman still on their contain game. Still going to the north side. Actually, really doing a, they're doing a really good job of this, to be honest. Dyth, they're so focused on harassment that Matthew Whiteman is actually able to out macro, despite the fact that earlier in the game I was saying that Matthew Whiteman was not expanding as much as they could be. That has changed completely. Dyth is now falling behind again. They've lost a lot of the expansion. Granted, they did lose one of their welders, which is a huge loss. That's why I always say, go for the constructors. Because if you kill the constructors, it takes that much longer. It like, takes the time to build a constructor and then move it back into position in order to start re-expanding and rebuilding. And that's exactly what Matthew Whiteman did, and that has paid off in... It's just paid off in spades. Look, look at all this. Look, it actually is still going to be a problem. This Don't get me wrong, this Mason is having a hard time. But this is... This is a problem. Oh, hang on, what? Set target fire. Oh! Is that what happened? I didn't even notice that. Sorry, it's kind of hard to tell unless you're shift-clicking. That that's... Or clicking on the unit in question. That that's what happened. That the... So, Dying Throne is pointing out in chat that there is this... I mean, you can use set target, which is... Here. And that will allow you to target a particular point in the ground. And units can move while doing that. Like, attack is a little bit finickier, because they'll move or attack. But if you're using set target, you can, like, basically attack ground. Or attack a specific point. And that can allow you to do things like hitting Scorchers while they're just going around the map. Which is apparently what happened to kill the Scorchers earlier on with the Emissaries. I'm assuming that's what you're talking about, Time Front. Might have been also the Ogres, because the Ogres can do the same thing with their own harassment. However, it may not be enough. Like, that's the thing with Dyth, is that Dyth's micro is godlike. And we've seen it a lot through this match. They, they have great micro. That's It is how they play this game. It's probably part of the reason they play Tank Factory, so they have fewer units to manage. The problem is just the macro. I think if Dyth got their macro going, they really practice getting expansions quickly and rebuilding and maintaining expansions and making sure their welders don't die. I could see Dyth becoming very much a top player. Because their micro is amazing. But, unfortunately, it's just not quite enough. Oh, it's the, oh it's, you're talking about the Kodachis. Using set target for that. Okay, I'll, I'll watch for that then. Thanks, time friend. It's a good thing to point out. And I should point out this entire time, too, there has been a lot of ratings. One Kodachi basically going around the entire map, putting Dyth back in the game. Ah, there it is. Yep. Yeah, see that little orange little orange line there? That is set target. That's exactly what Dime friend is talking about. The idea of put set target right where you need to in front of units so that they get hit by the targeted attack ground fire. And so they have to drive through the fire if they're if the controlling player isn't paying attention. Yeah, that is really cool. Okay, good call for Dime Frame. That is that is some micro. Like I said, if Dice just queued up a bunch of expansion behind that, just as a matter of course, I could see this like that would be that's an amazing combo. See, so yeah, like I said, Dice's micro is amazing. It's just how do you turn that into a good game, well, you have to have the units to make it actually work into the mid-game. Now, Matthew Whiteman, fortunately for Dyke, didn't have as much macro to work with, but they still had a lot. May not be enough, though. Dyke managing to pull this game back just thanks to that Kodachi rating, thanks to really smart use of the Ogres, 
They haven't managed to rebuild, though. They've mainly just been focusing on reclaim. And that's the thing. Matthew Whiteman is getting a little bit... It's getting a, a little bit eager to win. Throwing units into positions that might... That are not really the best. Now, Dice Commander is open. If that goes down, that is about... There's one welder left beyond that, but that's about it. Unfortunately for them, or fortunately for Dice, the Ogre coming in here, saving the day, getting rid of all the Scorchers, while at the same time, another Kodachi goes down, but not without a fight, not without taking out... It's like, well, heavily damaging one of the Scorchers, slowing things down even further. And that's the thing, Matthew Whiteman has been heavily slowed down, and really, Dice actually is at the point where I could see them coming in there and tearing everything apart. If you look at the attrition stats, 7,000 metal to 3,000 metal. Matthew Whiteman, I think their army value is... Kind of close, but yeah, metal use is about the same. So, army value should be. No, it's way, way behind. It's 3,000 metal behind. Army value is way in favor of dice. And that's, I mean, granted, again, tanks are more valuable individually, but that may not matter. Matthew Whiteman just does not have territory. They don't have territory. They don't have economy. They're, they're working on it. You can see the northeast side of the map. They're looking, scouting, making sure that the Mason can safely go over there. And it's not going to matter because the ogre coming in here is going to kill off the Mason before it has a chance, forcing it to retreat. And there's the emissary coming in to help finish that off. Like, Dyth is able to play their game. That's the thing here. Dyth is basically able to play the game they want to play. Because they are, there are few units on the board. There's a handful of mexes to deal with. And Matthew Whiteman is not out macroing them. So Dyth is in heaven right now. Uh, they're doing exactly what they want to do in order to take this game and make it work for themselves. The only thing that is... <laughs> Stop messing with the artillery and win already. <laughs> I mean, Matt says that, but Dyth can't actually win yet. I mean, they, they can. They can push in a little bit, but it's still kind of risky. Hey, Matthew Whiteman's factories are still pumping out units about as quickly as Dyth. If Dyth loses their army, they're going to be back to square one. So Dyth has to play this carefully. And Dice is playing this perfectly. Oh, okay. Dimefreund is pointing out another small fact about set target. The thing about commands is that they have to go through the server to be fully processed. And there's usually a 300, 200, 300 millisecond lag. You see, Dice has... Well, varies. But yeah, the server in this game doesn't have great lag response. I mean, it feels... It surprisingly feels okay despite that. But set target basically has to be set a few hundred milliseconds in advance of where the unit is going to be. And that is the tricky part. And we actually, if you look at the way that it's being done, we aren't seeing it right now, but if you look at the way that it's generally being done, Dyth is often setting it considerably in front of the units coming in. And it just works out perfectly. But yeah, that is definitely a matter of practice. Dyth has been spending a lot of time honing that skill. So I'll give them that. Also, FFC pointing out that not sure if Heavy's work as a first factory unless the enemy doesn't expand. Yeah. I don't know. I think I think Dyth can make it work if they were to build a couple more welders and make that their thing. Because the thing is, is that, Dyth, you're right, FFC, Dyth does depend on their enemy not expanding, but Dyth's strategy has always been to harass in order to make sure their enemy doesn't expand. So basically, Dyth does need their enemy to not expand, but Dyth is also doing everything in their power to ensure that the enemy does not expand. So, it's, it is a fairly well thought out strategy. Of course, it sometimes doesn't work, and if it doesn't work, then Dyth is in trouble unless they themselves are expanding, and that's what I mean by Dyth needs to expand as well. Also, yeah, Dominatrix came up, got knocked out, didn't really do much. I think Dyth, yeah, there's Dyth winning the game now. Pushing in and taking it out, and that is... Oh yeah, now Dyth does have that economy advantage. I think Dyth realizes now that they have the economy advantage, that is it. And there it is. Matthew Whitman throws in the towel at the loss of their commander, and Dyth moves on to the lower bracket finals to face Steel Blue for, thir for well, possibly winning the entire tournament. So that is that. We're going to be moving on pretty shortly. For a short break, we're going to be moving on to the lower bracket finals. So stay tuned for that. It'll be back. It'll be up in a couple minutes. And we are going to see who gets, who possibly goes for first and who gets third. Also, congratulations, Matthew Whiteman, on getting fourth place. So, yeah, we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Stay tuned. <laughs> 